It is the Majega Podcast. Hi everyone. It is the Majega Podcast. And in today's first ever episode, we are going to talk about mental health, but particularly in Africa. It has been one of the most ignored, if I'm to say, especially when it comes to the African homes that we stay in. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Vanessa Majaga, your host, and today I bring you an amazing person to tell us more of his perspective when it comes to mental health, but in African homes. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me introduce the one and only Suna Charles. Hi, Suna. Hello, Vanessa. You're most welcome to today's episode. Thank you so much, and I'm happy to be here. I am you. delighted. So, mental health. What's your say when it? Before I even go in depth into the entire topic of discussion today, when you hear mental health, what comes to your mind? Well, um, mental health. When someone talks about it, what comes in my mind is this kind of condition where you are no longer caring about whatever is taking place in your life. Well, uh, in Africa, people think when you say mental health, you're like this mad person holding stones on. Um, actually, that <laughs> yeah. is very true because um, in our African setting, we most of them, eight percent, mm. actually ninety percent, I can say, people refer to mental health as this kind of setting that you are totally mad out. <laughs> Especially when it comes to African homes, sure. Because we are seeing students who are smartly dressed, mm. they come, they laugh, and all that. But then they are saying we have mental health issues, exactly. and these kinds of students tell you, if I tell my parent that I'm having mental health issues, yeah. they will think um, I am adopting to the Western culture and all that. So, Payo say, I believe you've grown up in a African setting home or so, of sort. Mm. How has it been handled? I was once a victim. Mm. I faced mental health issues mm. because uh, I was living in a home. It was an extended family. But there is time where we could just break off from school for holidays. But as people, as my fellow students, were jubilating to go home, I was actually crying, lamenting. I was in fear because I'm getting home. Oh no. And um, this comes to how parents actually treat children at home. When I, where I grew up from, I was, in a, I was in a family where my mom wasn't there. Mm. I told my auntie, my granddad, and my uncle. And my parents were all not there. And um, there is a way I was treated that I only saw peace when I'm at school. Did you at one point confront any of the family members and tell them this and this? When you keep on doing this, it is affecting me. Or were you like kind of chickening out for you to do it? It went beyond. And um, I shared it with our school counselor. Mm. And she told me, speak out. Because they used to call me a stupid person. Oh wow, and, that's um, ugly. My grandmother used to share things like sugar in tea. And they stopped her doing that. The name they had nicknamed me was an idiot. Oh God, that and was so sad. When I tried to speak out, I told them, you're calling me this, but it really hurts me. Um, unfortunately, they called it as if I was disrespecting them. I get you. And I was severely beaten. What kept me on, because at the time I reached a point when I wanted to do suicide. Oh my God. But there is this voice that always came to me. Stay strong, I'm with you. And all I can say in everything that I went through, mm. the hand of God was on my shoulder. These are people that you've grown up with. It is yeah. your family. Mm. How best do you think this can be handled? Seeing that the, the settings are changing, it is becoming a modern world and all that. How best would you advise that kid out there? The best I can tell you is 
to put your focus on God. Yeah. I remain Vandasoma Drega. Till next time, bye bye. It is the Madrego Podcast.